have a, um, a presentation scheduled for um, the December meeting. So if anyone is interested, um, has an issue they'd like to present or just want to present about your organization, um, we do encourage that. We haven't had a, a organization presentation for a while from folks who participate. Uh, or if there's uh, somebody you'd like to hear from, um, just let me or somebody on the coordinating committee know about that. And uh, I think that's it. So we will start with uh, introductions if you just want to tell folks who you are and who you, what organization you're with, if you are with an organization. And then we have a presentation from Barbara today about Lead the Leaves and I think Lights Out. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the last 10, 15 minutes are available for announcements, uh, issues that folks want to raise for the DEC to consider, anything else that you'd like to talk about in that last part of the meeting. Okay. So, um, uh, we usually just do this. Uh, each person will name the next person uh, to introduce himself. So I will go ahead and ask Sandra to introduce herself. Uh, Sandra, you're muted still. Sandra Howell, Vice Chair, Durham City and County. Environmental Affairs Board. I, anything else? I, I didn't really hear what you were saying, how we could introduce ourselves. Yeah, we usually just have the whoever's introduced themselves just ask someone else to introduce themselves. Okay, so. it's Hannah. I asked Hannah. I'm still muted. No, you're not. Oh, hi, can you can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so my name is Hannah. I am the newest AmeriCorps service member for Keep Durham Beautiful. Um, yeah. And so then I will pass it off to Eve. Hi, everybody. My name is Eve Myerson. My pronouns are she and her. I am now an official tree keeper. I've been through training in Durham tree keepers, um, plant trees where there are none. Uh, there's a planning on Friday. I helped uh, do advocacy beforehand with Hannah and I will pass it to Hillary. Thanks Eve. I'm Hillary Harrison, director of education at the Eno River Association. Uh, I will pass to Tina. Hi everybody, I'm Tina Bessius. I'm a teacher at Durham Academy and I'm the sustainability coordinator for the school. Uh, Nicole. Tina, I'm Nicole Koskowala, Community Impact Associate at United Way of the Greater Triangle. And I will pass it over to Crystal. You're Crystal, you're muted. Crystal. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Crystal. I am an AmeriCorps member working with the Durham County Sustainability. I will be going out into the communities and talking with residents about their lived experience with the urban heat crisis we're experiencing, as well as talk about possible solutions. And I am passing it to Jordan. Hi everyone, I'm Jordan. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator with LRB Creek Water Service Association, and I'll pass it to LA. Good morning, y'all. Um, I'm LA Davis Durant. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator at LRB Creek Water Service Association. To Jane. Hi, I'm Jane Korest. Um, I had a previous life with the uh, full time with the 
um, Durham County Open Space Program, and now I'm back in a second life as a part-time contractor with the Durham County Open Space Program, and I'm happy to be here this morning, and I will pass it to um, Vanessa Mason Evans. I don't think you've gone yet. Good morning. I'm Vanessa Mason Evans. I'm the chair of the Bradtown Community Association, and I'll pass it to Karen. Hello, I'm Karen Proust, and I'm a member of the Durham chapter of the Climate Reality Project. And I head up the 100% committed campaign for Durham, which includes the solar schools team. And we're trying to uh, help the school system solarize schools. Um, I don't think Taylor Price has gone, so I'll just ask her to go next. Yeah, hi everyone, Taylor Price here. Um, I'm a new member of the uh, Durham Environmental Affairs Board um, and work as a sustainability manager for a global packaging company. Glad to be here. And I can pass it on, it looks like Katie might not have gone. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Katie Henderson, she, her pronouns. Um, I work at Duke Gardens um, and I'm our community um, partnerships coordinator. So I teach and, and work with different people to connect with the resources and, and knowledge here. And I will pass it to Shamika. Hey. I'm Shamika. I'm the um, ED from Slice 325. I don't think Thomas or Jeremy have gone. This is Tom Liebtag. I'm a first time visitor. I'm simply here because I heard there would be a presentation by New Hope Audubon. Um, is that everybody? Who else? Who's left? I think Jeremy hasn't gone. Um, I don't think Natalie's gone. I have not. Um, so I'm Natalie. I am a, a new member of the Inno River Association. I'm their um, new community partners manager. Um, so nice to meet everyone. And uh, I guess Jeremy can go ahead and go. Yeah, I might be the last one. Um, yeah, I'm. My name is Jeremy Miller. Um, I'm a disabled veteran. I'm retired now. Um, I just received an email from the uh, as part of the Master uh, Naturalist program. So I'm here um, this morning to, uh, um, yeah, hear about the program and um, recently working on certification with the Audubon for the for uh, our property and some other programs locally so yeah that, that, that's uh i guess the main reason for being here this morning so looking forward to it that's awesome welcome jeremy yeah thank you um, i don't think laura martinez or um or maggie have gone Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Laura. Um, I'm doing community engagement at the Nicholas School at Duke University. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Maggie Bailey. I'm the executive director of We Plan It Forward, a nonprofit that does tree planting, tree giveaways, environmental education, and lots of other stuff. If anybody hasn't gone and wants to go, uh, please feel free to jump in. Otherwise, I guess, um, Marsha, I don't know if you, I guess you introduced yourself and then we can introduce Barbara. Yeah, so great. Thanks, everyone. Um, really great to see you all. And so nice to have so many new folks here and folks um, uh, associated with the city programs. That's terrific. Um, so I'm going to let Barbara go ahead and uh, introduce her program, so. Okay, 
<clears throat> Thank you. It's great to see so many people on the call. Um, I'm Barbara Driscoll. I'm the co-chair of our Bird Friendly Habitat program for New Hope Audubon Society. And let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, okay. Everybody see that? Is that good? All right. Um, so I'm going to talk today about Leave Your Leaves and um, also Lights Out, which is a, hope, a program that Durham will initiate at some point in time. Sorry, it's not going, not paging down. It's just going down. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Here we go. All right. Um, so New Hope Audubon is the local Audubon chapter. Uh, we cover Durham, Orange, and Chatham's counties. Um, and uh, we have twice a week bird walks plus mm -hmm. other programming and other programs such as our Bird Friendly Habitat Residential Certification Program. If you're interested, go to our website, newhopeaudubon.org. Um, I want to talk about, you know, kind of leave your leaves and why it's important. This is a program we started um, and a few years ago. We worked with Keep Durham Beautiful and the city of Chapel Hill. Um, and a lot of, we're hoping to expand this program to more areas. Um, so in the fall, um, leaves start dropping their leaves and everybody can look out your window and see that that's happening right now. Uh, all these beautiful leaves are falling to the ground. Um, they've served their purpose with the trees. They come out in the spring uh, and they uh, provide energy to, to the trees through photo photosynthesis. And then as the days get shorter and colder like it is now, then the trees shut down this photosynthesis and release the leaves from the tree. So then they fall to the ground and they decompose. And this has been the life cycle in, in any deciduous forest from for thousands and thousands of years. So in the spring, when it gets warmer, they'll start the cycle again. And the important thing about this cycle is that this is the cycle that everything in our ecosystem is keyed into. So once the leaves have fallen to the ground, they, uh, they actually become a whole different ecosystem. Um, there's billions and billions of little detritus uh, insects that are in the ground that help to decompose those leaves. And this provides nutrients that the trees uptake. So if you remove these leaves from the trees, then they're not getting these nutrients. Um, and you're also not helping provide these other ecosystems, which are critical for soil health um, and um, make, it, make it so that you don't have to actually add fertilizer to your soil. Uh, they also promote soil moisture and, and reduce water runoff. So one of the important reasons I'm involved in this is because uh, as part of the life cycle with the trees, with the leaves falling, all of our insects uh, also overwinter and they go dormant. Um, so all of these butterflies and the luna moth that you see, um, one of their stages is to overwinter in the leaves, either as a chrysalis or a cocoon. So 94% of our butterflies and moths all have a phase where they overwinter in the leaves and they go dormant. Other insects such as the wonderful fireflies also, their larvae are in the leaf litter. And so if you want to see fireflies, you're going to have to have leaf litter. And insects are a very extremely important part of our um, ecosystem. They help decompose things. They feed insects and other wildlife. So this is something that we need to think about. You know, this is how things have evolved naturally. Other things that rely on the leaves are, of course, our birds, which are looking for insects, which are in the leaves, as well as chipmunks and turtles and amphibians. So there's a whole host of things that are eating what is in the leaves and helping, and this helps those critters get it get through the winter. Another advantage is that um, leaving your leaves promotes soil moisture. So if you have a lot of lawn, um, water just simply runs off that. It doesn't soak in as well or asphalt. 
And in my area, a lot of people are concerned about flooding downstream. Leaves help retain up to two inches of, of water as it falls. And so that also means that that water is soaking into your ground. It holds the water, so it improves the water retention on your property. And as it filters the water, it improves the water quality as it is released from your property. We also like for people to stop using gas blowers because those are a huge pollution issue. And if, if you're not doing anything with your leaves, then you don't need to be blowing your leaves. Um, the amount of no noise uh, produced by uh, one of these mid-range gas blowers is equivalent to 115 decibels, which is about the, the same amount of noise that a commercial airline uh, um, airplane take take off, taking off. Sorry, excuse me. Let me say that again. It's about equivalent to what you hear when a commercial airline takes off. Um, they also produces a whole lot of different pollutants in the air um, that are much more, um, such as uh, a lot of carbons and things like that that are that are harmful. And then the dust itself is also an issue, especially for people who have respiratory issues, because that dust contains all sorts of things such as uh, fecal uh, insecticides, things like that, that get blown up into the air. So these are some side components to people eliminating or moving their leaves. <clears throat> Leave your leaves helps with climate change. Um, it's been found that um, a large percentage or 8% of all landfills contain um, waste products from our yards and these products produce more methane than, um, than they would if they were left on site. And methane itself is a huge component in, in creating climate change. So when you keep those leaves on your property, you're helping to, re to reduce that methane because um, leaves left in the, in, the, in the yard do not actually produce any kind of methane. So save yourself some time and money. No need to pay for leaf pickup. I know that in some areas um, here in Chapel Hill, we support leaf pickup through our taxes. We're hoping to eliminate that uh, somewhat as we move forward. Um, you also don't have to purchase fertilizer because those leaves are acting as fertilizer and all the uh, uh, critters in the soil are also helping but by keeping your soil rich uh, with nutrients and um, then you don't also need any mulch to keep the weeds down. So relax, you can be like this guy and sit in a hammock instead of uh, doing a lot of work in your yard. So here's the four big benefits of leaving your leaves. You know, one, it helps our ecosystems and all of our insects, as well as all of the, the wildlife that uh, counts on those insects for food. Uh, it improves your tree and soil health. And I would recommend a lot of people complain about having uh, grass under their trees. I would recommend having your leaves go out to the drip line, which is as far as the branches extend on a tree. Um, and that way you also have to less mowing to do. Um, it reduces pollution and helps with climate change and then also saves money. So what do you do with all these leaves? So some people are worried about being inundated with leaves. Well, I don't take any leaves off my property and I never have an issue with them um, being too high. Uh, they decompose very quickly over the, over the winter. Um, so the best thing you can do is just do nothing and leave them where they are. Um, if you don't want them on your lawn, you can rake them around the base of trees and shrubs in a thin layer or into your perennial borders. Um, a worse the, or kind of the last resort is to compost them or to use them as mulch. Some people do that and then that goes back out into the garden. If you're looking to save your insects, that's not as uh, good for the insects. And some people um, use a mower to mulch them into the, the lawn, which is also not recommended because that also is, interferes with insects. So um, we have a pledge. Um, on the Keep Durham site website, it's leaveyourleaves.org. If you 
go on that side. If you haven't pledged, uh, you can do that, but you're gonna leave your leaves and then you can get one of these lovely yard signs uh, for free for pickup at the Ag Extension Agent in Durham on Foster Street. And um, if you live in Chapel Hill or in Carborough, they are also doing this uh, with a pledge um, at, to, to the town. It'll be at the town hall or at the public works department. And then we have a lot of information on our website about Leave Your Leaves. Um, and I wanted to mention um, that we had a grant through the uh, Triangle Community Foundation, a fund for the Triangle, and it helped us produce uh, brochures, the signs, posters. And uh, for the school teachers on the call, we have developed uh, school toolkits for grades one through 12, which are on the New Hope Audubon website. So uh, we're hoping to get those into the school system. Uh, they were developed by teachers in, um, in each of those grades. So it, it's uh, something that we are hoping that people will use more and educate our young people on how important it is to leave the leaves. So um, let me move to another topic, which is sort of integrated with that. And this is about lights out. Um, uh, so twice each year, billions of birds fly between uh, wherever they winter and the birds that are here that are going to migrate, they, they fly down to South America or Central America um, and, and then they return in the spring. Um, these birds migrate at night using the night sky. Um, so artificial light and, and, and glow around buildings can be fatal to migrating birds because it confuses them it attracts their attention and then they come and they circle. There was a big issue at the New York, um, at the 9-11 Memorial where they had these beams of light that were shining up onto where the towers had been. And so all these birds, they noticed that all these birds were flying around and around in circles and then they would just drop to the ground exhausted uh, and be dead. Um, so they had to change, um, now they, when they see this happening, they turn the lights off long enough for the birds to, to go on their way. But also we've seen some other incidents recently, uh, some large um, amounts of birds, like in Philadelphia two years ago, about 2000 birds were killed flying into buildings in downtown. And also in Chicago, just this fall, about a thousand birds were killed flying into actually uh, what was a, a reserve windows of a building. So um, this is something that happens primarily during migration where there's large numbers, but it also happens um, on a daily event uh, or it could be like one bird a day or something. But during migration, this is especially critical because the birds are, trying, are going some places where they're not as familiar um, and migration is extremely dangerous. So some of the things that you can do, uh, the actions that you can take are to turn off any exterior lighting. Um, this is important. Um, you can leave that lighting on motion detectors instead of leaving it on all the time. Uh, reduce lighting inside buildings. Um, a lot of people have these walkways in between buildings now that are glass. Those are typically very high collision zones. Uh, there's a few on UNC campus that we've been monitoring and trying to get them to do something about this. Um, there's other things you can do, but the best thing to do is turn off the interior lighting on these higher story buildings. Um, and then in your own yard, if you downshield exterior lighting to eliminate um, the, the horizontal glow and any light that's directed upward, that's very important. So um, one of the members of our board, Jean Bai, has created a, an app called citybird.org. Um, and this app can be used to document window collisions. So if you're in downtown Durham or any of these places and you note dead birds, if you would report them using citybird.org, that would be helpful for us. Um, this is a photo of some of the birds, so just a few of the 2000 birds that were killed in Philadelphia last year. And these are all small warblers that are trying to go to South America. They winter over there and then they come back in um, the spring and they breed here in the mountains and around where we live. So 
So lights out. Um, we have developed a partnership with Chapel Hill uh, to have a lights out program, and we would like to do something similar in Durham. Uh, Raleigh also has one. Charlotte has one. Winston Salem. Um, so this is to work with local buildings and with the town to turn off those outside lights during fall migration and spring migration, uh, which is fall migration is typically September 1st to the end of November. And then spring migration is March 15th to May 31st. So this not only saves money because you're reducing the amount of energy used on the outside, but it also helps our insects, which are impacted by uh, outdoor light at night, and that's bad for the insects. And it also reduces a bird deaths. So we're hoping that uh, we can work with the Environmental um, Assessment Board to uh, on a lights out program for Durham uh, and also, um, I guess that's about it. Anybody else, if you're willing to in or interested in working on lights out. I think that's, okay, that's the end of my presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing and see if there's any questions. Barbara, um, I do have a question. Um, just wondering, you said you're interested in working with Durham. Um, what stage are you at with that? Is there anything that um, folks um, could do to support that effort? Um, well, we we actually probably need to make a presentation to the environmental board uh, in Durham to, to before we go to the council. But um, the council actually three years ago passed a resolution to, to make Durham a more bird friendly city. And this was part of it, but it wasn't specifically related to lights out. Um, to more actions. Um, and then I appreciate that Keep Durham Beautiful and some of the other organizations have picked up on our, our feed as far as leaving your leaves and, 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 and including that in their newsletters and the lights out also has been really important. I had a comment about lighting when I went to see Doug Tallamy when he was here recently. He mentioned that there are lights in the pink orange color spectrum that like warm warm lighting that is interferes less with a bird's ability to navigate. I don't know if you had any thoughts or comments on that. <laughs> uh, well, that's true. Birds, birds actually see in a different light spectrum than we see in. They're in a higher um, range of lighting. Um, they don't recognize windows. Um, uh, the, there are some lights that are recommended by the Dark Sky Initiative that are better. Uh, um, the best thing is to not leave lights on outside at night uh, or to put them on a motion detector so they only come on occasionally um, when you need them. Um, that, that's actually the best thing to do. I also, um, I've been thinking about this. I was actually thinking about reaching out to you um, in general because like y'all's posts and other posts about leaving the leaves have gotten very popular. And I read the comments from the detractors that like to say that, well, mosquitoes also like to breed in leaf piles. And they're like, I don't want, I don't want more bugs. Therefore, I'm not going to leave my leaves. I didn't know if you had a a comment to that <laughs> well it's not it's actually not um an issue really um, um with the mosquitoes um, um mosquitoes primarily are going to lay eggs in in places like if people are having mosquitoes in their gutters or in water containers or something they need they need a half an inch of water in which to reproduce um, that's not what you're going to find in the leaves um that water penetrates and goes in, it gets absorbed. Um, so that's not actually where they, they would lay their eggs. They're laying their eggs maybe in uh, uh, like an opening in a, in a tree trunk or someplace, but they have to have a certain depth of water in order to reproduce. Right, that was what I thought, but I wanted to check with you. I think someone also mentioned they're like, ticks live in leaf litter, so I'm not going to. But I was under the impression that ticks fall from trees. Um, <laughs> ticks normally climb up on um, grasses and shrubs. 
to to attach themselves to other critters as they pass by. Um, I mean, they are going to be in your yard somewhere. Um, I'm not sure that having leaf litter promotes that, but I'm not sure that's the reason to say, well, um, let's not promote any other insects. Mm -hmm. other insects will eat them. Um, I I also, well, even though I'm with Audubon and we do a lot of counts and bird counts year round on different things, I'm also uh, on a, a Lepidoptera service um, and the North American Butterfly Association um, does counts of birds, uh, butterflies. And I will say that in the last five years, we have probably lost 50% of our butterfly population. And that's significant. That's a huge loss. Um, and I was talking to the director of NABA at this conference I was at last week, and he said all along the East Coast, the numbers are just plummeting for butterflies and moths. And so if they're dying, if they're not reproducing, then we're not going to have things like birds because they have to rely on insects to feed their chicks. Um, and you know, people want to see butterflies, for one, they're beautiful, as are most moths. So, um, you know, this is hurting our whole ecosystem, collapsing from the bottom down. Hey, Maggie, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, so oftentimes what I'll hear from people is that, you know, uh, there'll be snakes in the leaves, you know, specifically copperheads people are afraid of, as well as um, just other vermin. And so I just want to know, like, what should my response be to that? Well, I, I yeah. guess they're part of the ecosystem. <laughs> I mean, um, I guess, um, unless people are out walking around in their leaves, um, it, it, it's, I've heard some people say, I'm afraid of copperheads. I leave my leaves all year round and I haven't seen any, you know, specifically in the leaves, they're usually, um, at this time of year, they're looking for places to hibernate um, and they go dormant and they're going into either holes or they're going under, under limbs mm -hmm. or trunks or into rock piles or little crevices and things like that. Um, so um, it's, it's not promoting snakes, you know. Um, I, I hear a lot, I, there's more, a lot of people are worried about, oh, my yard doesn't look tidy. Um, and so I recommend if you're worried about that, you could put um, pine mulch or something around the edge to make it look into mm -hmm. leaving your leaves. Um, but in where I live, there are a lot of people who have nothing but trees in their front yard and they blow every single leaf off their front yard. And there, you can tell that their soil is uh, completely barren and you um, just have a bare yeah. patch of dirt. <laughs> yes, a bare patch of dirt. But not only that, it becomes extremely hard and like concrete, and water mm -hmm. just immediately runs off that. And yeah. the sand and dirt run off and cover yes. the sidewalk. Yes, yeah. So all of that all goes into the drainage system, which impacts our water quality. So, um, you know, there are a lot of reasons why people, I think, are afraid of anything out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I can't um, I can't address all of those, but I can say that if you leave the leaves, it's it's so much better for the ecosystem and for the for the health of your trees and your soil. Great, thank you. And I'm hearing your birds and your butterflies too, which yes are more might be more positively received. Right, butterflies and birds and chipmunks and salamanders and uh, box turtles uh, rely on food that they find in the leaves. <clears throat> Any other awesome questions? Awesome as always, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry that was a little long, maybe. <laughs> Barbara, a quick note. Um, I'm at work at, at school, so I'm behind a firewall and I can't access the New Hope Audubon website unless I go to my phone and turn off Wi-Fi. So I think it, it could be there's an expired certificate or something, um, just a, a possible thing to Some other people can access it, so uh, but there might be a certificate that needs to be updated. Okay. Okay, any other questions for Barbara or comments? 
great. So thanks very much, Barbara. Thank you. Um, and so now is a part of our meeting where folks are welcome to pretty much say anything, share anything, raise issues, talk about the DEC, ask questions, anything that folks would like to bring up. Welcome. I think we can go ahead and turn off the recording also, Dawn. Thanks.